this month, of course, we are um, embarking on um, the topic of absent, uh, but present, maintaining his presence to remain in his presence. And, you know, as I was just thinking about that topic, um, I began to say, you know, it really, if you could boil it down, uh, just, just the topic alone is if we don't get out of God, we, he won't get out of us. And I tell you, if we stay put, then we can abide in a place with him where his presence abide. And I tell you, there is nothing like his presence. I believe there's a song that says there's nothing like his presence. Amen. Amen. So tonight, um, I'm going to be coming from um, pretty much a anti uh, metabol, which is a term that means just to switch the topic of our subject for this month. And I will be coming from the subject, are you all in or, or present but absent? And if you notice, our month talked about absent but present. But are you present but absent? And so, um, you know, before we get all the way in the word, I want to just say a little prayer, a short prayer. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord God of fellowship. We thank you for the words and the, and the songs and the prayers that have already gone forth. Father, we thank you for your presence. Lord God, there's nothing like your presence. And Father, we just want to abide and remain and fixed in your presence. Father God, we ask you to speak through my lips. Father God, think through my mind. Father God, let what you have for your people be said, Lord God, and let the hearts of the people be receptive, willing and able to receive, Lord God, that their lives may be forever changed. In the mighty working name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so we are still in a season, um, I guess you could say uh, football season. And so um, in football season, every football coach in the country wants a team and his staff to be all in. Um, truly, not just a football team, but every team, every organization, there is not one team or organization um, that can accomplish anything without the utmost level of commitment from those involved. There is a coach by the name of Bruce Brinkley who says most people don't go all in because they don't, they, they're scared. Don't go all in um, because they know that it's gonna hurt. But when people come to grips with the cost of ultimate commitment, the rewards are worth more than the pain that it took to get there. Once you go all in, he said, you win. And you don't even realize it, but you won already. Game is over, maybe even before it's played because you win. And you know, as I began to think on that, that, that was an amazing, um, enlightening saying. But I liken it to our scripture text tonight we will be coming from Philippians chapter one, verse 21 from the King James Version. And this is a very short um, passage, but it says, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Of course, we know that this is Paul who is speaking. And Paul sees how um, he is able to rejoice even though he has um, pain and even though he is imprisoned and he is in chains. I believe it was uh, Pastor Eric that said, you know, the pain, um, you know, we have pain in this season, which is for growth. And Paul he knew that even through the pain, even through being imprisoned, even being chained, 
he was even chained to the Roman guards, he was able to rejoice. He, uh, Paul knew that he won. He won already. If he lived or if he died, he had already won. He had the opportunity if he lived to witness to the guards and to the prisoners and, and um, continue to spread the gospel through letters. And uh, so Paul rejoiced that God would be glorified and the gospel of Christ would be spread though everything that happened to him in life, he got further calls, he said, to rejoice through all of his ability that he had, this is his conclusion. He said, to live is Christ. He summarizes this commitment here in a very succinct way by saying, for me, now for me, to live is Christ. This is his ultimate commitment. This is his going all in, as we may put it. How much can I praise him? How many times or how, how many people can I share him with? How many can I teach about him? And how can I further the kingdom and bring him glory with my life? That was Paul's objective. Paul says, my whole life is not measured by what other people say and, or what other people call success. Paul had had success, but he said, it's not, my life doesn't consist of what people call success, but by what I am able to do for Christ while I'm here, no matter how long that is. To me, he said, to me, to live is Christ. I'm continually saying this because I want that to sink in. To me, to live is Christ. Paul would not have, Paul would not have been able to endure all that he went through had he not been totally all in, sold out and totally committed. As a military soldier, there was things that uh, I went through or thing, challenges that the military within itself just brings, such as the gas chamber, rock marches, and drooling PT sessions that I would not have endured if I was not all in. And to be honest, I didn't have a way out. Not to say I didn't think about it, but I was all in. So I was able to endure. Not long ago, um, they did a story on um, some of the radical fans for different NFL teams. In, uh, in this interview, they interviewed a young man who was a huge fan of the uh, Green Bay Packers. In the course of his conversation with the interviewers, this young man said, I live for the Green Bay Packers. He said, if it promotes the Green Bay Packers in the world, I'll do it. Isn't that amazing how this man a fan was, could be so committed to a team that did not save him. How he can be so committed to a team that cannot heal him. Is there anything wrong with his commitment to his team? By no means. It is okay to be committed to a team. It's okay to be committed to a job. It's okay to be committed to a ministry. It's actually a good thing, but should we be more committed to these things than we are committed to Christ? Amen.
So my question here is, what are you committed to? We should make our decisions in life to be all in by whether it benefits Christ and advances his kingdom. We should not make these decisions based on do we want to do it or not. Some days we do and some days we don't. How's the saying go? Some days we feel like a nut, some days we don't. Does it make, we should not make these decisions or whether we, we should be committed to a thing based on does it make me money? We should not be commit, uh, make the decision to be committed to anything based on does it feel good. We know that our feelings are fickle. Our feelings are subject to change. And lastly, we should not make these decisions based on um, whether other people want me to do it or not. Or is anyone else doing it? No, we should make these decisions based on the fact that does this further the kingdom of Christ in this world? As this fan so boldly stated, if it will promote the Green Bay Packers, I'll do it. Our conviction tonight should be if it promotes God, if it promotes the King of Kings, if it promotes the Lord of Lords, if it promotes the kingdom of God, count me in. Amen. Amen. Now our purpose, and I heard someone tonight talk about purpose, but our a clear cut purpose will cause you to commit to go all in, to sell out. I know there goes that word purpose. And some of you cringe. I know I did for so long. I cringed every time I heard the word purpose. Even if some of you are saying to yourself tonight, still saying, what is my purpose? Why am I here? Let me put it to you just like this. To live is Christ. That's your purpose. Paul knew so plainly that to live is, is Christ. He even didn't mind dying. He said to die is gain. Either way I win, he said, but my purpose is to live is Christ. Take the gifts and the abilities and the time, the job, the marriage, the family. Take the uh, whatever it is that God has given you and live for him, honor him and bring glory to him. Your purpose tonight is to live is Christ. Paul knew that he had already died to himself. And you can't kill a dead man. So Paul was able to distinctively and proudly say, to die is also gain. I know that putting your whole self into um, anything has been taboo in the day and time we live in. People go into jobs and into marriages and to business with a get out plan. They have a plan before they get in and how they can get out. So in doing so, it's hard to get go all in. One foot in and one foot out is the mindset of today. Perhaps success is waiting behind getting all in and putting in the hard work. Maybe success is behind that. Half committed, a half commitment is really not a commitment. 
to be halfway in, I believe it was God who said he won't have us hot and cold. It's called lukewarm. He spews us out. But a half commitment, let me explain how a half commitment, you know, I was a student for a long time and I had an ability, maybe some would say a gift or a talent to be able to go, just go to class for a long time and just by going to class and listening to the teacher, I could come out of there with a pretty good grade. And I believe by the time I got to college, um, it became a little more challenging, but I could still hang in there by the chin of my chinny chin chin. But sometimes we, like myself, go in with just half commitment or just putting in just a little of us. Maybe you weren't a student who did this. Maybe it was a relationship. Maybe it was a marriage. Maybe it was your job. Some of us need to learn how to give our whole self to something. God has called us to be the head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath. And so when we put our whole self in, no matter what it is, we can say, for me to live is Christ. Because whatever we do, we glorify Christ. I believe it was Paul that we're talking about here tonight. Paul was able to put his whole self in. Perhaps he wasn't like myself and some of you here tonight. We didn't have the best start with putting our whole self in. Paul talked about, and I believe it was Philippians chapter three, verse five through eight. He said he was circumcised on the eighth day. He said that he was the Hebrew of Hebrews. He said he was a uh, uh, chief of the law. He understood the law like nobody else. Paul doesn't seem to me to have been a slacker. Paul seemed to have always been the kind of person that whatever he did, he put his whole self in. So much so that he had so many accolades and so many accomplishments that at the end he said, you know what? I count it all nothing. I count it all dumb. I count it nothing for the cause of Christ. He realized that his real purpose was to live is Christ. Amen. But some of us need to pray and actually ask God to deliver us from not putting our whole self in, for creating habits that allow us to only put part of ourselves into what we do. It is um, so interesting how people nowadays can um, be interested in a check, but they're not interested in the work. When beneath the check or the check is beneath or the reward is beneath a commitment to do the work. We have to stop making everything about what we can get but start making it about what we can give. Not just committed to being present, but to put in the work to put ourselves all in. We need to show up in our homes, in our schools, in our jobs, in our neighborhoods, so that others know that something has definitely been added. Yes, that's right, added. I'm talking about the presence of God. When you show up with your whole self, the presence of God shows up. And people will want to see, and, 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 and they're going to want to, you to be there. They're going to actually miss you if you're not there. When you fill out 
for example, a business loan, they ask you, how much capital do you have? Because no one wants to invest in you if you don't invest in yourself. If you're not willing to put your whole self in, nobody is willing to invest in you. So many are sitting on their abilities because they will not go all in. You're asking God to do what you are not willing to do for him. And wondering why, I know I have, wonder why my prayers are not answered. Because I wasn't willing to do for God what I'm asking him to do for me. God, will you go all in for me? Yes, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you yourself. It's going to cost you blood, sweat, and tears. It's going to cost you. But guess what? Jesus gave us an example and a guarantee that he will never leave us or forsake us. Paul took this guarantee serious. How do we go all in with God in our life? That's a question that we need to answer tonight. How do we go all in? Point number one, we need to fight to stay engaged. Of course, we know the Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith, but we need to fight to stay engaged. You can't fight the good fight complaining today about a moment you will miss tomorrow. What are you saying? I'm glad you asked. When, your, when my children were little, I remember how, you know, it looked like they would never grow up. It looked like, you know, they were gonna stay infants and toddlers forever. And I found myself complaining I was complaining that, you know, I can't even go to the bathroom by myself. I was complaining that, you know, I can't even eat in peace. I was complaining that, you know, when is my house going to look like a house or look like the house that I want it to look like? And, you know, God, in his infinite love and wisdom toward me, arrested my thoughts and showed me how I was wrong. I immediately repented and asked him, Lord, will you help me to enjoy where I am? Will you help me to enjoy the journey? Will you help me to enjoy my children at whatever age and whatever stage that they are in? I sometimes even now miss those stages. But I, um, even though I missed those stages, I've learned like Matthew chapter four, I mean, chapter six, verse 34 says, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient is the worries for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we have to learn to fight to be engaged in today. We can't put our whole self in anything if we're not there. Some, uh, some of us need to be set free from the when then mindset. When this happened, then I'll do that. Others of us need to be set free from the what if mindset. What if this happened? Then I'll do this. Harvard University had a study that found that 47% of the people's minds are not in the same location as their feet. When I heard that, I tell you, their minds and their feet were in two different places. Meaning they are present, but absent. We are often not present because we lack faith. 
Faith sur surrender, faith surrenders the past you cannot change and trust God with the future you cannot control. I love Psalms 118 verse 24. It's one of my favorite verses. I find myself saying it pretty often. And I know you all know it. It says, this is the day the Lord, which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I believe that this is one of my favorite verses because it gives me a focus on today. This day is the one he made. I'm gonna to rejoice today. I'm gonna to do what I can do today. I believe it was Elder Vaughn that preached on Sunday and it was so dynamic, but he said that God had dealt with him to do everything he could do in a day. Tomorrow is not promised, but we have to fight to stay engaged in today. We have to fight to stay engaged. Not only to, 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 do we have to fight this fight to be engaged for the simple reason that we need to stay focused on the present, but we also have such a fight because of things like cell phones and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. It's a challenge to stay engaged. But we have an example to help us to walk this thing out. Jesus was always present, engaged in the moment. Let's look at Luke chapter 18, verse 35 through 34, I mean through 33. This was a story about, I'm just going to read verse 42 and 43, but just the backdrop is this was a story of blind Bartimaeus begging on the side of the road and Jesus was passing by and he was going to Jericho, I believe it was. And blind Bartimaeus heard the crowd and he was curious to what was going on. And blind Bartimaeus said, what's going on? What's going on? And as the people began to tell him that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, he immediately began to grasp and engage in the moment. And he began to cry out, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people began to pull on him and say, no, be quiet. Don't yell, stop screaming. And he, thank God, began to put him, his whole self in even the more. And he began to scream out even louder, son of David, have mercy on me. And of course, Jesus heard and the Bible said that Jesus stood still to engage in a moment. And at this moment, divinity and humanity collided because this man went all in. Verse 42 tells us that Jesus said unto him, receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. Verse 43, and immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it gave, when they saw it, they gave praise unto God. Jesus was focused and engaged on pleasing the Father. And he knew faith pleased God. If you notice, not just this story, but as many stories where Jesus recognized faith and he knew that faith pleased his father. And he immediately began to engage. He knew that faith pleased God and therefore his focus was keen and engaged. Tonight, I want you to find out what pleases God. And that is what we need to stop for. That's what we need to engage in. Jesus stopped what he was doing and he engaged with blind Bartimaeus because he knew that faith pleased his father. 
Also, we have a story in Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. I'm not going to read this whole story, but this is the story of Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector. He had um, actions that was conducive to repentance. Zacchaeus heard of, as well, Jesus was going through Jericho and Zacchaeus, all the crowd that was crowding around to see Jesus, Zacchaeus being a short statured man, could not see over the people. So he ran ahead and he climbed a tree just so that he could see Jesus. And at this moment, Jesus, when he got to the point where Zacchaeus was, Jesus called out to Zacchaeus and told him, come down. For this day, I'm going to come to your house. Jesus went against the crowd, the crowd that said, you know what? Zacchaeus is a sinner of all sinners. That didn't bother Jesus. Why? He saw a moment to be engaged in. Why? Because this moment he knew pleased his father. He was sent for this purpose. The Bible said that he was sent to seek and save that which was lost. Zacchaeus, of course, showed repentance. Zacchaeus told him, if I've taken anything, if whatever I've taken from the people, I'll give back fourfold, that's repentance. And the Bible said that uh, Jesus told him this day is your salvation. For I have come seeking and saving those that are lost. Stop running from those that are lost because that pleases the Father. And we know, according to Paul, for me to live is Christ. My whole purpose for living is to please Christ. My purpose for living is to give him glory. And, and if Jesus is concerned about the loss, guess what? It's time to engage. Jesus stopped what he was doing to engage with a sinner who was repentant. He didn't ask you to buddy buddy with him. He didn't ask you to hang with them, but he did ask you to reach them. Amen. Point number two and how we can go all in. We need to keep a heart of love and a heart of gratitude toward Jesus. Keep a heart of love and gratitude toward Jesus. Luke chapter 7, uh, verse 36 through 50, and I'm not going to read all of that, but we're going to start at verse 36. And it said, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with the hairs on her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake with them himself saying, he spake with himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. Amen. So we see here that <laughs> not only did she give her whole self to Jesus, she received forgiveness. And Jesus actually told her, woman, 
Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. This word saved here is likened unto Matthew chapter 9, 22, where Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood. When he turned and he said to her, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. So here you have two women that got Jesus' attention. The first one and the second one went all in. Not only did they go all in, but they were forgiven and made whole. Many of us want to be made whole, but we don't want to go all in. We want to be healed, but we don't want to go all in. We want to touch, but we don't want to go all in. If you are looking to be made whole, show God your faith. Throw yourself all in with love and with gratitude. Throw yourself in. Amen. Point number three in how we can put our whole self in or go all in. We're going to, point number three says, run to win. We're living in a race, but we got to run to win. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse 24 through 27. And it reads, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Here we see Paul is talking about running to win. I don't know if you've ever ran in a marathon or if you've even watched others run in a marathon. You can always pick out the athletes. You know, in marathons, you know, people get out there and a lot of times they do it for the cause. But then there's those that are serious runners. And those serious runners have been training for a long time. They didn't just hop out there. And they're, they have a plan in how they're going to run. And not only do they have a plan, but they have an expectation that they're going to be one of the first ones to finish, if not the first. They run with the mindset that I'm running to win. I'm running to be, to come in at a certain time. I'm running with a purpose in mind. I'm running with a goal in mind. Of course, we've all seen maybe track events now, track is a little different from marathons, but yet and still, when track, run, track stars run and when their teams run, run, they run to win. They put their whole self in the race. And sometimes they give even more than they knew they had to give. They push themselves to the limit. If you've ever seen any of them run, they'll at the end, they'll even stick their chest out to give themselves that extra boost because they're running to win. The way that you put your whole self in is you run to win. You don't just run to run, but you run to win. Win what? 
whatever it is that life throws your way, you're running to win. You're running to win so that God can get the glory out of your life. Amen. So I admonish you to give it your all. Yes, it's going to take a sacrifice. Yes, it's going to take discipline. Show up. Stay engaged. Love God and give him and your own life what he has given you. All you have, give it back. I believe it was Isaiah chapter 50, verse seven. It says, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. When you go all in, the Lord God will help you. And as long as you set your face like a flint, Set your focus. Do not be moved as you go all in. Tonight, I pray that you are all in, that you are present and not absent, that your mind and your body is in the same place, that you put all that God has given you to put in. I pray that none of you, including myself, will leave this life with regret that we didn't do all that God had put in us to do, that we didn't say all that God put in us to say. Fight to stay engaged. Keep a heart of humility and love and gratitude before the Father and run to win. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen.